Rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine. This is part 19. Valve chest reassembly. Although the valve chest is really part of the cylinder, I've kept this one separate because it's quite complicated. There are quite a few parts to fit here and an extra one that is not normally in a steam chest. This is a little piece of brass that acts as a spring to hold the valve onto the port face. One minor problem with horizontal steam engines is that when there's no steam pressure in the valve chest, the valve can fall off the port face, and we'll need a quick flick of the regulator or steam tap to bang the valve back onto the port face. By putting a little bit of a spring in it like this, it will hold the valve onto the port face. This scenario only applies to slide valves, not piston valves. I much prefer slide valves for model steam engines, because they tend to wear in and they don't wear out. But they do put a little bit more pressure on the valve gear, because more effort is needed to move them with the pressure of the steam on the valve against the port face, unlike piston valves, which work in an entirely different way. Back now to the rebuild. You can clearly see what I'm doing because I've just done this in the previous episode with the piston rod, now I'm doing it with the valve rod. I'm wrapping the valve rod in some graphited yarn, giving it a nice coat of oil, and once again, my graphited yarn has lost a bit of its graphite. It's very important that none of the graphited yarn fouls the gland cap, and all of the graphited yarn needs to be in the hole. I wasn't happy with this, so I quickly removed it, coated it in oil, and put it back. As you can see, this gland only fits one way around. This is not a massive problem, and it's very common with these small engines. None of them are mass-produced. Most of them are built by engineers of varying standards of competence. The build on this particular engine is not brilliant. Some parts of it are good, and other parts of it are a bit weird. Holes are not drilled in the right place, particularly on the castings. For instance, if you look at this slide valve, it's terrible. It's really not finished off well at all, but it works. I'm not going to say, oh, it's only a steam engine. I once had a bit of an argument with a chap who was selling a steam engine to a friend of mine, and all he could say to cover his incompetence in working on this engine was, oh, it's only a steam engine. Having a look at the slide valve, there's a couple of things bothering me. One is my own incompetence. I've forgotten to trim the gasket from the inside edge of the steam chest. I'd better do that before I go any further. So using my Jack the Ripper for Beginners scalpel kit, I removed all the excess material, and you can see it here. My excuse is of course I was making a video and therefore I forgot. I'll never ever do it again. Right, so now I've removed all these bits of gasket material, the valve sits on the port face, which is always a good thing. So I'm screwing the valve rod into position, and now I can see how the thing is going to work. A little bit more oil. I would absolutely flood this component with oil. A slide valve always has to have a good oil supply to allow lubrication between itself and the port face. With a high degree of superheat, if this component is lacking in oil, then both the port face and the valve will get scored, allowing steam to blow to exhaust. Although from my experience, in small model steam engines, this doesn't happen very often. On the end of the steam chest was this thing. I think it's supposed to be a displacement lubricator of sorts. Because this is so badly made, and plus it's far too small for a two inch bore cylinder, it's going to go in my scrap bin. So I'm using some Loctite 542 and a little blanking plug that I made. This is a quarter 40 thread, and this is a much better idea. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.